Um, and to a large extent, what I'm going to say backs in really what Mickey has been saying about Silver Town Tunnel. Because as uh, basically uh, our work has, has very much been on the back of the No to Silver Town Tunnel campaign. Um, we've seen where East Greenwich is in the map. I'm not going to show uh, many more maps because some of, one, one of my uh, residents' um, uh, neighbours said, um, East Greenwich is a state of mind, not a place. <laughs> I think that's so very true. But um, the East Greenwich Residents Association was started not around the subject of air quality or pollution. Um, it was started at the end of last year, I think in November. Um, and it was decided in about January it would be a very good idea to monitor our appalling air quality ourselves. Not least to raise um, public awareness uh, in East Greenwich. So I'm going to skip through some of the mechanics that have already been talked about, and I'd like to concentrate on, on, some, on five key aspects that, that have come up so far. So it's, okay, our objectives were to, or are to, to get evidence about the state of our air quality, which is owned by us, rather than comes from the local council. I'll come to that in a moment. Oh, uh, oh, I don't know why it's cut off. Next slide. That, that or that. Okay. Well, I, I don't know why it's cut off. It's funny, that, isn't it? <laughs> we can't explain it. Uh, let's see if I can. Um, Yes, it's only that, it's only that one slide, yeah. so uh, maybe, have you finished on slide two? Yes, go on slide three. Okay. So, uh, yeah, even, even, so. Okay, that's the We all know that, and what we were doing was using passive uh, air diffusion tubes to, to measure nitrogen dioxide, with the help of, of Andrew um, once again. And um, we all know it's because it's easy and cheap, and there are also legal limits. Um, we decided to follow the DEFRA guidelines, starting the first Wednesday in, in a month, and we started in, in the month of March, uh, went on for a calendar month into April. Had our results back very quickly, like we did at Lucian, um, within a couple of weeks. And since then, we've been um, doing quite a lot with the information we, we've, we've received, and also the information that is officially there from the council. How did we go about um, choosing our, um, our receptors, our, our sites? Very much on the back of the No to Silver Town Tunnel campaign. We knew we, we could afford 10 <laughs> at the first go. Um, and the way we actually funded it was to uh, publicly sponsor each tube. Uh, each person adopted a tube, and they could take the family out, take their friends to see it, they could get to know it, they could talk to it, they could do anything else but touch it. Um, and, and, and that has been quite a good way of actually funding. We are funded through into now 2016. Um, and hopefully we'll go on and on and on. Because one thing we do want to have is a, some good longitudinal results as to what the effects of these, I'll come to them, what Nick has mentioned, them, quite massive developments in and around each range will be. We chose seven, um, and I'll point them quite quickly, seven of these receptors that the No to Silver Town Tunnel campaign have used, which are along here, um, there, and one here. Um, and that is so we can actually build on the back of, of the rest of these, using um, basically uh, the same DEFRA guidelines that we knew that, that the campaign had also used. We knew we were going to get fairly bad results, there we go. All of the ones which are red or black, as Nikki has said, are above legal limits. And just to go to the mechanics, we did a deal to the guidelines. Um, we had residents sponsor a tube or more. 
um, and some people have said, can we have a tube next to our house, please? Which we've got to control a little bit. Um, it did, we did involve right from the beginning two local councillors. Uh, one is now, I think, the chair of highways and lives in East Greenwich. The other is um, a councillor for East Greenwich, but lives in Woolwich. Um, but that was quite good, and that got us um, clearance um, from basically an, an access to the council. We had a small team, only four people, uh, but more people turned up to a, um, a, a workshop that's, that basically Andrew ran at Amy's Greenwich. And we publicised the results, as we have done in the mission, quite, quite, quite well. Not as well as we would like to do in the, uh, in the media. But we are certainly getting quite a lot of media coverage. Okay, here's one critical junction. Not with much traffic at this time of day, but um, that's one of our tubes going up at the junction of anyone who lives in, near the area will know that's the Blackwall Lane going up to the, the, the Blackwall Tunnel um, and Woolwich Road, Trafalgar Road. Our High Street, as we now call it. We'll come to that in, at the end. They were our locations. Uh, I haven't color-coded them, but I've just put the, um, the results of these in. Uh, the white ones were, were the ones which mirrored the notice to the town tunnel results. The blue ones were our controls. We were going to have two of our controls originally. Uh, I'm glad we chose having three where our pollution should be quite low. One near the park, Greenwich Park is here, one quite near the river and near a, uh, a primary school, uh, another within this, what I call the Fingal Triangle uh, of, of East East Greenwich, uh, but away from, from major roads. Uh, we've been working, one point is, we've been working quite well with the Notice of the Town Tunnel campaign, but also with a sister society um, association called the Western Association, and they actually put a receptor um, just here, which again is by a local school, which recorded 34. Um, so essentially we've got four con controls or, or, or points which should have show quite low uh, uh, pollution. In fact, they show quite elevated results, um, and that was something which was quite important for us to actually test. That's something we'll be looking at very closely in future um, surveys. Using the information, okay, we have made a breakthrough with the, um, the Borough Environmental Health Department, had a good meeting just two weeks ago uh, with three of the team. Uh, they were not surprised at our results and they have got um, quite a good coverage of uh, pollution surveys within the borough. 58 passive uh, locations um, throughout the whole borough, uh, of which about four are in and around East Greenwich, and, um, and, and quite a number of, of automatic um, pollution uh, sites. We've been conducting pub publicity campaigns uh, in, in newspapers and, and media. Um, we have the website, which I referred to at the beginning, um, and often that around major developments such as the Silver Town Tunnel, we won't say any more about that, but that is um, essentially something which will impact this bridge if it goes ahead quite severely. The massive new IKEA, which will not result in any um, traffic uh, uh, increase. A new Sainsbury's, which is a relocation of an old Sainsbury's, but doubled in size and a Marks and Spencer's complex just down the road, just outside of the area. And then of course the, the, the so-called Vista style Anthex uh, village at what well, neighbours always refer to as the Dome, but now we have to call the O2. Why can't it be rechristened the NO2? I don't know. <laughs> and, and last but not least, 20,000 new dwellings, we call them houses, on Greenwich Peninsula itself, just over the border. 20,000, a new town. Um, the population um, of East Greenwich is probably about eight or 9,000. So that's going to have quite an impact on traffic. Um, and last but not least, oh dear, 
That's one of them as well. It's the London Cruise Liner Terminal, which is uh, not near the dome itself, but in fact is in quite a high resident, highly populated residential area, and one which is going to be adjacent to delightful new developments on the riverside. Uh, this is 30 stories high. Um, this is one now being built, and here's a, a nice little picture or uh, a, a sketch of one of the cruise liners calling at this lovely spot of London. Um, that's the last um, major development that we've been working on, and even if we take the developers' consultants' estimates of diesel consumption, while the ships are uh, hoteling, because they will actually have most of the, they'll have their passengers in there and be running their auxiliary engines all the time. 700 litres an hour of diesel consumption. Not as pure diesel as uh, we buy in the pump, or some of us buy in the pump, and without much of the, um, the after um, treatment that you would get in a normal HGV. We've worked out that's the equivalent of nearly 400 idling trucks running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for the whole of the summer period. And that's just one little development which has arrived on our plate in the last few <coughs> weeks. On that note, I'll end. There we go. Oh, sorry. Our future plans, we want to continue into 2016, certainly. But we'd like to continue further from that. Um, to get longitudinal results. Uh, we have a strategy to question every major residential planning application on AQ grounds, if we can keep the pace up. When the near hotspots, uh, we are working with citizen groups and other campaigns uh, quite effectively uh, to pool information. We'd like to do that a lot more, and we'll input to major policy consultations. Again, I dropped off the bottom a little bit here. The national strategy, which should be consulting, consulted on in September, uh, that will be that will be the one consequent to the um, the Supreme Court ruling last April. They have to they have to produce a national air quality strategy yeah, yeah. by the end of this year. The consultation, I believe, will be in September. There's new London guidelines, which are going to be consulted on fairly soon, as to how boroughs will conduct the um, air quality monitoring and, um, and frame the local air quality um, zones. And, uh, and lastly, um, the, there's a, will be a consultation, further consultations on the auto lower emission zone. And um, I didn't know, but uh, Greenwich Council have officially come out in favour of that being extended to the whole of Greater London which is one good move forward by my council. I'm sorry I've chopped off the knees here sometimes, but um, that's all I want to say about his credentials.